Over the years, Skoda has brought in many nice cars onto our domestic market and most of them have been pretty impressive. Much like this, the Skoda Yeti, which was barely criticized. It was considered to be one of the best options when it was launched as a compact SUV. But the sales figures say something really different and that got me wondering why did the Yeti fail in India? And now that they are pretty cheap in the second-hand market, should this be your next project bill? So let's talk all about the Yeti. You're watching The Drivers Up. My name is Bhavni Vaswani and welcome to Auto Culture. The Skoda Yeti was one of the most potent premium crossovers in our market. It had a very short stint in the Indian market, but it gained popularity among those car buyers who were looking for a premium SUV which didn't feel as bulky. The Skoda Yeti didn't qualify as a hardcore off-roader, but could easily tackle pretty much any challenging terrain you could encounter on a daily basis. Just to refresh our memories, let's just take it for a spin and talk about what it offers. This is my slim bifold wallet from Little Astronaut. It's very nice, it's very soft leather. You have 11 to 13 tabs to put cards in and one pulling tab for your favorite preferred card, which is my driver's license. You also get a hidden coin pouch and it's RFID safe. I've had a lot of fun using this and in fact, I prefer this over my previous premium wallet that uh, was like double the price. They have one year warranty from manufacturer defects. I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys to check them out. Back to the video. The Yeti impressed quite a lot of critics since its beginning. It is quite a big looking car, but looks can be deceiving. It is actually a 4.2 meter long car, which doesn't seem to be that long. And it definitely shows while driving. The dimensions of the car are just 4.2 meters, which are slightly shorter than a Lora. And when it comes to visibility, it is fantastic. I can look 360 degrees around me and I've got mad ground clearance. And I also don't need to worry about any bumps because my clearance is ridiculous compared to a sedan. It being a rather short wheelbase for a compact SUV, it is rather easy to swivel through traffic and even park in tight parking spots. So this definitely can be a very dailyable car if that's what you want from it. This Yeti is powered by the same 140 bhp uh, 2 liter TDI that is found in the Lora. It uh, it pushes a decent amount of power and it revs slightly different. I find the clutch to be slightly um, trickier and uh, coming out of first gear you do have a tendency of bogging down because it has a very undiesel like behavior. It's more like a petrol gearbox that you need to like slightly rev it up before you set the car into its movement. When it comes to the entire rev band, it revs up to 5200 rpm, but the peak power lies in between 1700 and 3800 rpm, which make the car very easy to overtake in uh, rush scenarios and just using the mid-range throughout the day is very enjoyable. Apart from that, the car handles pretty well. It's, it is on springs that are slightly uh, softer and have much longer suspension travel than uh, a regular sedan and what that does it is that it makes it a bit more handleable to drive in all of these uh, bad patches when you are in the city especially in a city like Pune where every hundred meters you've got a bad patch of road this alleviates a lot of that tension uh, of scraping the belly and uh, just being able to enjoy the most out of this car. Now, you can get this same Yeti in the 4x2, but if you actually want to take corners like a madman, get a 4x4. This uh, 4x4 system is mainly front wheel drive. It uh, holds pretty much 95% of the power on its front wheels most of the time, but it can go up to 45% to the rear. And while giving it proper guns, it makes the car really confidence inspiring and really nice to drive.
The Yeti is built on the same platform as the Skoda Lora, code PQ35, and that for a start means it has a highly sophisticated all-independent suspension. The SUV, however, uses a full-time four-wheel drive system. Under normal conditions, it all but functions like a front-wheel drive car. Up to 95% of its power is sent to the front wheels, with more power only being sent to the rear wheels if any slip is detected. Up to 90% of the power can be sent to the rear wheels if need arises. And it has a limited slip differential as well, something that is very handy in slushy conditions. The 2-litre common rail diesel and the 6-speed manual gearbox are well up to the task in the city too. Step on the inside of the Yeti and its interior quality can actually blow punches with its bigger competition which is the X1 and the GLA of that time and those were like 30 lakh rupees compared to this. Everywhere you place your hand, the quality of the rubbers or the plastics are really nice. There is not a single rough edge or a single ugly parting that makes the craftsmanship look super nice and it doesn't portray any form of poor craft craftsmanship at all. Now, when it comes to uh, the usability of the inside, it is filled with a lot of cubby holes like one right in front of you. The door sill is massive and you've also got three water bottle holders over here that aren't the size of water bottles. So I don't know what is that for. For rear passenger space, Skoda has taken a book out of the tall boy hatchbacks and used height as its biggest advantage. Now it is fairly easy to say that a six foot guy and a six foot driver will definitely be able to sit in front of each other and the space in the rear is very good. You've got a lot of visibility and the height is what actually gives you. You can uh, move your chair front and back and you can also recline each individual rear seat to your comfort. The rear space is super comfortable. You've also got two air conditioning vents and a little cubby hole right in the middle as well. All in all, this is a very nice place to be in and the only difference that I see from it from a Lora is just the seating position that you're sitting a little bit taller. Otherwise, very nice place to be in. If you're in the market for a pre-owned Skoda Yeti, this is what you need to check. 1. Water pump. Check if it has been changed before. If it hasn't been, be mentally prepared that it might fail. Replacement cost is rather low if the leak is caught on time. It's a bit more expensive if it damages the timing kit too. 2. Differential oil. Check if the differential oil has been changed according to the prescribed intervals if you come across a 4x4 variant. 3. Instrument cluster flickering. This is a problem exclusive to some Skodas such as the Yeti and the Lora. The instrument cluster backlighting tends to flicker and conk off in certain cars. The only solution according to the company is to get the whole cluster changed which is an expensive affair. 4. Gearbox Mount Check for abnormal noises from the suspension. Also, check for any metallic clanging noises from the front left when you take tall speed breakers or go through potholes. That points to a worn out gearbox mount. 5. Wheel Speed Sensors Check for ESP, ABS and power steering warning lights on the instrument cluster. That points to bad wheel speed sensors or even wheel bearings in the worst case. The Yeti will always be legendary in my opinion. And if it wasn't for its slightly premium pricing out of the showroom and the fact that I was 10 years old when it launched, I would have definitely considered one of these right out of the showroom. But now this being super cheap in the second hand market and it being a really nice platform to build, this could be a very good match for somebody who wants to go over rough patches at really good paces. And even for someone who just wants a comfy, capable SUV and not want to break bank. I think that Skoda has actually shot themselves in the foot, actually discontinuing this formula and bringing the Karoq and the Kodiak. What are your thoughts on the Yeti? Do let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe, hit the like button. My name is Bhavni Vaswani and that's all from me. See you.